When we're deciding what to clean, so much of that decision comes down to the dirt and the stains that we can see. Whether you're spring cleaning or just doing regular home maintenance, there are things that you can't see in your home but are totally disgusting. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about five of said very disgusting things in your home and I'm gonna show you how to clean them. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you are ready for this summer. I have my summery kimono on, I am. While throw pillows look cute, let me tell you, they're not so cute from a cleaning standpoint. You lie on them, you eat on them, you hug them, your dog or cat sits on them, the kids drool all over them. These things get gross. Now to clean them, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do, but of course you have to be mindful about the fabric care label. And here we're dealing with two, not just one. First one is the cover. Most pillows come with the cover and then the insert. So we'll talk about the cover first. Hopefully the cover is machine washable. If it's something that delicate, that's delicate, you might wanna put it into a delicates bag before you launder it. And of course, I would recommend using cold water and gentle detergent if you're a little bit concerned about the durability of the pillow cover itself. Otherwise, you can throw it in. The hotter, the better. It's gonna kill allergens and bacteria, and it will help make it feel fresher. But if you gotta go cold water, I totally get it. Now, if your fabric care label says that it is not washable, at that point is when you would wanna take it to the dry cleaners. That's why sometimes when you buy throw pillows, I recommend looking at the fabric care label, because I happen to think it's a little hoity-toity to have to take your pillow covers to get them dry cleaned, but hey, that's just me. Now, your actual inserts, if they're removable, they may also be machine washable. Again, you're gonna see that fabric care tag, so you can throw it in and wash it per the care label instructions. And if it's not washable, something that you can do to help kill odors is to take it outside on a sunny day and just hang it up and let the sun do its thing. Those UV rays will help freshen it up and kill any odor causing bacteria. For upholstered items like couches, sofas, ottomans, and chairs, sorry guys, I guess what? I'm a little bit sick again, so I might get the crackly voice every now and then. For those items, you obviously can't machine wash them. In this case, you're going to look for one of four codes, and these codes are going to tell you what type of cleaner you can use on the particular upholstered piece. The first one is W, and that stands for water. If it is a water-based cleaner, you can use that on that particular piece of furniture. The way you will use it is by spot cleaning. So you'll apply a little bit to the surface. You can agitate it with a cloth or a brush, whatever the case may be. So long as it is a water-based cleaner, you're in good shape. The next one is the letter S, which stands for solvent. Solvent is something that does not contain water and that is typically in the cleaning world what we call dry cleaning fluid so if you are not comfortable with using this this would be a great time to bring the item to a professional upholstery cleaner or to bring someone in to do that job for you next up we've got the ws you got the one two punch right there pretty clear you can use either water-based cleaners or solvent-based cleaners the final one is x the letter x also, pretty obvious means you can't use any cleaners on it whatsoever. So these are the type of upholstered materials that you're gonna be vacuuming or brushing only. If you get a stain on them, in this house we have hardwood floors on the main floor and carpets on the lower level. I don't think those carpets are gonna stick around forever, but until we get rid of them, I can tell you they get stained and it's for a wide variety of reasons. We've got soft drink stains, we've got hard drink stains, wine, etc. And throughout the year, you know, you're going through life, things are busy, you kind of like blot it up, fix it as best you can and move on. But there's gotta be a point at some time during the year where you say, I've had it with these carpet stains, I'm gonna deal with them. When it comes to cleaning those carpet stains, you'll see here that I'm using Carbona's Oxy-Powered Carpet Cleaner, which features an Oxy-Powered formula and built-in brush applicator that gets right in to get stains right out. So to use it, I'll just squeeze gently to moisten the brush, and then I'm gonna work the brush and the bristles into the stained area. You're gonna make sure that you don't soak it though. Remember, the right amount of product is really important here. Then I'm gonna let it sit for about three minutes or so and I'll remove excess product with a clean, damp, 
and color fast cloth or sponge. That way I don't have to worry about any dye transfer. A couple tips for success here. Remember, dwell time is so important when it comes to removing carpet stains. You have to apply the product and then the magic is when you let it sit. It works really well, but you have to let the product do its work. You also want to make sure that you're testing the product in a hidden area first. Anytime you're cleaning a carpet, you always want to do this just to make sure that the carpet is not going to lose color. If you've ever walked into someone's bedroom or hotel room and the first thing that hits you is that really stuffy, overwhelming smell, it's coming from the bedding. It's coming from the duvet, the mattress, the pillows. So your duvet is something and your duvet cover is something that you probably don't think about cleaning frequently, but it needs attention. So we're going to break it into two sections. First up, the duvet cover. It's a pretty straightforward thing. It's got its own fabric care label, so you're gonna check that out. Any stains on there, you can simply pre-treat before you launder, and then of course, just launder according to that care label. When it comes to bedding, I always recommend using the hottest possible cycle that the material can tolerate. And the reason is, the heat is going to help kill allergens, bacteria, any uh, dust, dust mites, anything, uh, body oils, dead skin cells, all of that stuff washes away much more effectively in heat. So again, the hotter, the better, but of course not compromising the material. Next up, we're gonna cover how to clean that duvet. So some duvets are not machine washable and your fabric care label is going to tell you that. If it's made from silk, even some down you can't machine wash, and even some synthetic, same thing. So your fabric care label will tell you if you can't wash it at home, take it to a dry cleaner, they will know how to take care of it for you. If you can, again, I'm gonna recommend that you use the hottest possible cycle that your duvet can tolerate. When it comes to drying, you're going to air dry it and once it's fully dry, you can put it in your dryer with a bunch of dryer balls, put it on a fluff cycle. That way air is circulating and the dryer balls will help to fluff up your duvet again and breathe some life back into it so that you don't have a pancake duvet. That's no fun. If you can't spot clean or machine wash your drapes, no problem. Your local dry cleaner will be more than happy to do that for you. I think they charge a premium for it but they at least know what they're doing and they can not only make them look fresh and clean, but they can also get rid of stains and odors. Now, finally, if you wanna get rid of odors or if you notice that your window coverings don't look as good as they used to, you can use a steam cleaner to freshen them up. And what that means is the steam it won't get rid of the dust, but it will help to kill some of that odor causing bacteria or perhaps get rid of some of the wrinkles or age spots in your window covering. So again, it won't get rid of stains, it won't actually clean them, but it will help deal with the odors. A very special thanks to our friends at Carbona for sponsoring this video. You guys know that I am all about using the right product for the task at hand. Well, Carbona has a complete line of stain removal products which can handle virtually any stain situation in your home, including the oxy-powered carpet cleaner that you saw me using in this video. Visit Carbona.com to conquer your stain the Carbona way. And that brings me to this week's comment question, which is, what is that one stain that got away? That one stain that you just could not ever get rid of? I will tell you my stain story. When I was young, I used to have chronic nosebleeds and my pillow, well, it didn't look pretty, let me put it that way. And we just kind of gave up on dealing with the stains and my parents figured, okay, we'll get you a nice pillow when these nose please take care of themselves. So that's my stain story. It wasn't a pretty pillow, but man, old blood stains can be a real challenge. Tell me what your stain that got away was in the comments down below. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you wanna learn more about Makers Clean, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.